Hello my dear friends and welcome to Pastel with Kathy. Today we're doing this nice little koi carp painting and I do hope you enjoy doing that with me today. We have some pastels here to look at. There's not a huge selection that I've chosen for this. We have a variety of blues and greens and also the yellows and oranges with a rosy pink colour in there. Later on to, in the painting I will probably dig into my set of schminkies there to put some bright colour on top but um, I'm not going to go through a list of exact colours choose what you have don't go out and buy anything special for these paintings because it's great to work with what you've got and not have to stress about having exactly the right colour because it's going to turn out great anyway now the paper I'm using I haven't used it before it is a Arto brand um, bright color paper pad it's a3 size 160 gsm it's got quite a textured surface usually I prefer something a little bit um, less full-on with the texture but I don't mind it too much um, there's 24 sheets in this and it comes in a variety of colors and while it would be nice I am not sponsored by any of these people um, my pastel brands are Art Spectrum and Schminky and whatever paper I happen to have on hand is what we use. I will usually let you know as we begin. So I've just chosen the semi pinky colour at the beginning of my pastel pad. Um, whatever paper I ha you have on hand like I said and don't worry about exact shades of colour whatever you have will be just fine just choose something as similar as you can find so to begin with I do like to when I'm doing something like this turn my paper around so that the flow of the fish is going with the natural flow of my um, movement of my arm so I'm just showing you here how I have placed him in the right hand bottom third in the corner there if you were divide, to divide your page by thirds in each direction his nose will start right on the top corner of that bottom section and then he'll kind of go up towards the opposite corner and like I just said I do like to turn my canvas so that the, the flow of something like this will go with the natural movement of your arm and if that makes you more comfortable always feel free to do that if you need to get a, um, a good flow in your line it can be very handy um, rather than struggling against your body so we're just really roughly popping him in now and getting the shapes round about where we want them You just want to get a nice flowy feeling about him at the moment and not worry too much about anything else just um, just placement more than anything you want size so that he takes up about two-thirds of the space on your paper and just bring those two sets of wings out And then his lovely flowing tail. And roughly colour him in, get the line down the middle of his back, and then pop him up the right way. There we go, now you can fiddle with him a little bit more and start getting a little bit more colour onto him. Now we're just going really, really roughly at the moment, which is just your early layers you don't want to lay down too much pigment but you want to get a nice bit of color in that we can sort of rub in and get that first layer down of nice bright color so we know where we're at I do love the the flowy movement in the sky he's really well, 
any if you click cap they're just really um really pretty it sort of squares off on the nose just a little bit and there's a slight dip there where the eyes will be and then he's got a nice fat body So just kind of pay attention to those shapes there and you'll get him close enough. Fairly happy with the shapes now. I'm just going to go in with the white and that's a, a pale pinky white and just start to put some of those colours in so that we can blend them, figure out where about the highlights are going to be. We will be going over this several times so again don't stress about anything, just go with the flow and enjoy. just going to come in with the tips of our fingers and give that a little rub in and get that color nicely down because this paper is so textured we really need to do that to get the pigment into the texture so he's not all spotty and blotty Again, you can really sort of start to define now where his wings are going to be and which way his tail is going to flow, all those kind of little things that we want to think about as we go. But don't worry if you're getting a little bit wide or a little bit big on it, we can bring that in with the watercolour later on. And just remember as well to keep wiping those fingers because otherwise you make mud. And we never ever ever want to make mud. Well, not usually anyway. <laughs> now I've got my dark sort of thalo blue colour and I'm just going to start defining his shape a little bit. Again, don't stress yourself over it, just go where you think it's going to be because it can all change later. But um, the, the sort of more accurate you can get now, the better. But as you'll see, I'm really 100% accurate to begin with. So it's just a case of going with the flow, feeling your way around, seeing what looks good as you go. And if something needs adjusting later, that's the beauty of pastel. You just go over the top. Pastels are definitely my favourite medium. Just so forgiving and fun and getting your fingers dirty and getting in there with the, the tactile feeling of everything I just love it oh, I wish I could lose this sore throat I apologize for my rusty voice
just having a look at where those wings are naturally going to go and cutting out any bits where you think it might be a little bit too thick or leaving some gaps where you think you might have gone a little bit thin maybe if you if you want to bring extend them out a bit further once you've got some of that blue down you can kind of see a lot better once you get the contrast happening what the overall shape is going to look like a lot easier than you can with the orange on the pinky background contrast is everything and then just have some fun with it pop down some big areas of your background color that's going to be the main undertone of the watercolor and then with that same blue I'm going to start popping in some of where I'm going to have his shadow areas start getting a little bit of dimension on him and pastels always look messy at, at the start don't worry about it about where the shadows are, where his gills and his eyes are, and just roughly pop them in. Where's the light going to be hitting him? Where's the shade? Composition, light source, contrast. Um, I think are probably the three most important parts of painting. It's something that you should be considering all the time. So I've got a beautiful aqua colour there, which I'm just going to be popping over that dark blue and just getting a little bit more depth and contrast into that background and working a little bit more on shaping him still being quite loose and quite rough at the moment just blocking in areas and throwing that color down don't be afraid to get in there and get it down Now I've got a darker aqua colour. Just again going in a few little patches. Using that to cover up some of the orange that I put in that was maybe a little bit wide or not shaping enough. Shaping. Somebody correct me there please, it does not sound right. I'm just working on getting the nice flow in the shapes there. And if you put the aqua colour over the orange, they're going to make a nice shadow kind of colour as well. Any time I'm touching on the body of the fish, I'm using a light touch and a kind of a almost circular tiny circular tapping motion and that'll gradually build up the feel of scales as we go and it's not too soon to start doing that because each time you do it'll build all those little layers of little scaly bits and, and depth now I've picked up a dark red color And getting in some of those tonal values. Actually, that wasn't the dark red color, that was the 
brownie red colour. Just figuring out where I want the shadows to be at this stage. Now the light pink almost matches the colour of the paper. Just throwing a little bit of that back into the background. It's just there in my original artwork that I'm using as a reference for this. It was originally a um, epoxy and acrylic painting. I, know, I thought it would make a nice pastel as well, so tonight I thought I'll give it a go. And just getting some white and getting a little bit of light into the water. Just touching around here and there and thinking about where my light source is and where I'd like the highlights to be. So the light source on this one is coming from the bottom left corner of the page around about. So touching on the, the left hand side of the, the painting a lot more than those wings on the right that I'm working on at the moment. They don't get very much of the light at all. So we're going to get some of the darker colours in there. Have a little bit of contrast again. It's super important to make any painting pop. We're actually with the red now. And getting a little bit of lovely brightness into him. And just beginning to define where I really want those wings and fins to be. Starting to get a little bit more definite with it. I need to tighten up just a little bit now. I still want the whole thing to be quite loose. But um, we always have to be mindful about losing your tooth in the end. So always go fairly lightly and fairly carefully. And as you can see, just doing those little tiny circular, almost tapping motion over the body of the fish to start to establish that scaly feeling. I did find with this paper that I had to put quite a bit of pressure actually onto the paper to get it to get into that toothy surface. It was rather um, rather a textured surface. I'm not sh quite sure how I feel about it. But, um, this guy turned out okay, so I'll persevere and see what we come out with next. Just keep on going over him, not completely covering anything up, but adding more of that darker colour where the shadows are likely to be, and just doing that little circular motion. And you're starting to be able to see where the light's hitting him now. Start to imagine the folds and movements in the fin. Up in the shadows where they would be to, to show that. Just go with the flow of it. If you feel like you've got something sort of swinging off the wrong direction, now's the time that it's very easily fixed.
just getting a little bit of texture into that part that I'd left highlighted. Looking at the shape of the body, making sure that I get the slightly darker tone down the sides there where it, where it, so that it gives the depth. Now I have a orange again and rather than rub with my fingers I'm just working that colour in with the orange just running down with the side of it and blending the red and the orange and the pinky tones and getting that smoothish flowy colours and tones happening bringing some brightness back Take your time, there's no rush with anything. Just gradually building up the tone. And building up the tone gives you depth. Again, just remembering to go with that tiny little circular motion when you're on the body of you. And keep those lovely scales happening. And I've picked up the orange again. Just touching in where that's gone a little bit too heavily. Just soften it out just a tiny bit. Very small touches, little tiny flicks with your fingers so lightly. And just helps to smooth out as well where the, the rough texture of the paper is sort of disrupting the marks that I want there. And then going in back in to add that texture back in where I've lost it a little bit. We do quite a bit of back and forth with this guy but we do we do this to build build texture, build depth. Establish light and dark. So we've got that light, light pink colour now again. I'm just thinking about where the light might be hitting him. And bringing some of that contrast back again. See, he's getting quite dark with the reds and the oranges. I'm going to bring some light back. So we'll have more light coming in on the left hand side here. I'm working at the moment and just using the orange again to blend that through sticky tapes not holding terribly well on the canvas that I'm using to hang it on today so I'm going to reach up there a couple of times and re-secure it when it starts to move 
Again, just smoothing and blending a little bit there just to get all that lovely pigment into the paper. Again, remember when you're doing this part to give your fingers a good wipe pretty regularly, otherwise you'll end up making mud. You can see it's still not too late to kind of change the direction of those fins if you need to. Just using the side of the pastels now and that sort of sweeping motion if you hold the pastel at an angle will um, just naturally give that kind of flowy fin shape. We're going with the light pink again, so a light orange. Popping his top fin in, and now I've picked up a white. He's going to start putting some lighter light highlights in. Get some of the brighter tonal values happening so that we can get the contrast right in the end. Just remembering don't completely cover anything up, just popping highlights on. Really making sure to try and get those wings where we want them now, or close to. Still a little bit more to do on them. Just allowing those colours to blend using the side of the pastel. Just feel like I want that tail to go more in a downward direction. So I'm just heading it off there now. I so said it's not too late to change it if you're not 100% happy with how it's sitting. Just going to pick up the red again and bring that around a bit more. Cover up some of that blue. Put some of that shadow in there that we lost. After each couple of strokes, just take a look and see what's going to happen next. Just alternating now between the, the light and the dark to get that tail happening where I want it to. Bring it downwards a bit more. Make it curve around.
others take it on. Blare and blend, blare and blend. Swapping back and forth between the orange and the red and the paler pinky colour. We don't want to be using the white just yet. So just stick with that pale pinky orangey colour for your highlights at the moment. So we're coming in with the white later on and giving the, the last bits. I really do hope you're enjoying painting this as much as I am. It's been in some ways quite the challenge and in other ways just a joy. So how's it going for you? What do you think? Now I've got the dark blue again and just going to get some of the contrast areas that I need for the water. And this will really start to make him pop out. I don't want to go too overboard with this dark blue. Just want to get some nice contrast in there, but we still want to have some light coming in the water. So leaving some nice little gaps there in that darker blue as well. And the lighter blue. And then just around the front there, define that shape again. I'm going to kind of blur his edge there a little bit on the on the shadowed side. Start to get some random shapes happening in the water in front of him. contrast around the tail again so that comes up more three-dimensional just in that couple of little touches I was saying that's why I love pastels they're such great instant gratification They won't dry on you like acrylics do. They don't take forever like oils. You just touch the paper and your colours down and ready to layer or blend or leave loose and full of lovely marks. Possibilities are endless. Love it. Just working your way around the fins and getting the contrast without completely covering up and losing the light. So you'll be casting a bit of a shadow underneath him so we're going to go around the front edge of his head. Just really have a close look at defining that shape. Now 
Now I picked up the black and I'm going to try popping his eyes in and see how we go with that. Don't feel a hundred percent on his eyes at the moment. Might be changing that and fixing it up later. But I'll just pop a little bit of a bit more depth in that shadow along there. So this is the side that the light's not hitting him as much. And then just to even it up a bit, we'll go down the other side just a tiny bit as well, but not as heavily as the right hand side. Let's bring his tail in a little bit, make him a little bit less fat. He's quite the fat little fish at the moment. leave that for a minute and just work on the water a little bit getting a little bit of green in there add a bit of variety in the color of the water I love that green it just it really makes it makes the colors pop it's very pretty pale um, it's not quite a lime green not quite a grass green it's just a just a very pretty green, nice watery colour. And just letting that blend with the darker and lighter shades of blue it makes some really really pretty colours. This is slightly darker green. Don't want to go overboard with this one at all because it might dull what we've got. Just adding just another another shade in there. Just for a little bit more of a variety. And back in there with the aqua colour. All these layers just add more to the water, give it more interest. Background should never be boring. I should always have light and life and movement. And in my opinion, colour. And in this case, I guess it's not really a background, it's part of the painting because it represents the water that the fish is swimming in. So we want to make sure that we get some nice light in there. Got the light aqua colour again now. Just cutting back into that dark blue in places. Just working my way around. Got the dark blue again, just pop that contrast back in, and this is this is how I work with pastels all the time. Um, I'll go back and forth and back and forth and just build and build until I've got the the amount of interest and depth that I'm after. And with this paper having so much tooth, it's so easy to build that um, that colour up without losing your tooth and not being able to apply more colour. It just seems just about endless this paper. So that in that way, it's um it's really quite great. 
and don't forget to wipe your hands a lot when doing this part I've said it before and I'll say it again many many times don't make mud so this blending is done basically with a very light tapping motion so you're only blending the tiniest area at a time otherwise your colors are just going to all, all that layering of colors just going to become um, pointless because it'll just as I said it'll become mud so a little tap 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 um, blending motion and wipe your hands and then tap 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 wipe your hands very very gentle you just basically just tapping that color into the tooth and the only reason I'm even having to do this is because personally it bothers me with this particular painting that the texture is still quite rough with even the amount of pastel I've put on there and um, that tooth is really showing through still the rough texture of the paper and I just want to get that pastel sort of right in there and get that smoothness of the smoothness that I like to see with the, the water. So just remember, wipe your fingers, wipe your fingers. Now as we get into these wings here, I'm just going to drag some of that blue down into them as well. And just add to that flowy feel that they have. Get those shadows happening, you're just using the blue. It's already there. Just dragging from the blue into the orange yellow. And softening the edges. Because he's underwater, we don't need to have any any edges that are too too harsh or too hard. We want him to be soft because he's he's underwater and he's a fish. He's all soft and flowy. Try and capture that feeling. Just pulling those colours around where I want them now. Very, very, very gently. I feel like I want to have a little bit more red on his tail and lose some of that blue in there so just pick up the red and pop it on in isn't pastel wonderful Again, just redefining that shadow area. Correcting anywhere that I feel the shape isn't quite right. If you are enjoying this painting as much as I am, please don't miss out on the next one, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit 
the like. Um, all of those things mean more to me than you know and um, I so appreciate you being here and painting with me. And I would absolutely love to see more of you. And um, also, if you'd like to join the Facebook group um, and share some of your work, I would really, really love to see how you've gone. Remember if you're touching the body, body, little circular motions and the tail and the wings, long flowy motions. Still trying to get that tail to curve off to the south. dipped into the sides of the scales just fiddling and playing and probably going too much is really starting to stand out nicely so I hope you're getting there too with yours so I have the white now and just touching some highlights in on the scales same little motion again not too much of it though. A little bit on the face. Just to bring that up as well. Oh, excuse me. It is very late where I am. Um, but it is the only time that I get to do any kind of recording with any kind of peace and quiet the rest of the time the house is just way too noisy yeah, I'm okay I can work in the noise I'm very used to it but you can't hear me talk so <laughs> I have to wait until everybody's sound asleep and all the noise is gone and then I can do my voice service and, and finish my editing and stuff so here we are in the middle of the night. Once again, layering, layering those colours. Now if you have paper that doesn't have as much tooth as this, you might have to be just a little bit more careful about how many layers you're going to put down. But um, one thing I can say for this paper, even though it's slightly frustrating for me to have the amount of texture that it has um, that shows through the pastel and um, means you have to sort of tap it in or rub it in to, to smooth that at all, it does hold an incredible amount of pastel. So that's one really great thing about it. I just want to define the front edge of this wing so I'm just very very gently going in with the black
it'll just define that front edge that would be the most in shadow. Got a nice light bright orange there. Just again, just adding a bit more brightness back into him. <sighs> Almost my bedtime. I do love my relaxing piano music too, which I hope doesn't breach any copyright laws. It is playing on autoplay on the kids' electric piano. And um, I do enjoy just putting that on and listening to it. I don't even know what most of the songs are called. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, can't help you there. But um, it just gives me that nice little relaxing background noise to paint with so basically when everyone goes to bed the um, the TV and devices go off and the music goes on and the paints come out and that's my playtime my me time What's your me time? Is it painting as well or is this just a sometimes hobby for you? Or uh, do you get to paint all the time? Let me know. I love that bright orange. It's so vibrant, so pretty. I feel like his face is a little bit too long. Too much gap between the front wings and the, the head. I'm not sure. Hmm. And now I have a lighter, brighter colour of orange. Again, love my shrinky. The, the colours are just gorgeous. I use my schminkies to finish off just about any painting. Um, they go on on top of your other pastels with very little effort even when you don't have much tooth left and um, they're just so soft and so silky smooth and beautiful I just love them. Just about there, I think. Some little highlights on. too much so tap them down that sort of tapping motion is also really great for just subduing something if you've gone a little bit too heavy with it beautiful color
Here we go, fishy. Just flick off at the end of those strokes and it'll naturally make the, the right kind of shapes. Now finally I have the white, the soft white for my schminky set. I'm getting our first real bright highlights in. Now it's a short piece and I've just got it laid on its side. I'm just tapping very lightly in the areas that I want to have that highlight. And again having it on its side. I'm dragging it down across those um, those fins will just naturally give those shapes that we want. Now yeah, we're doing good. Just let that single stroke of dragging across, let the colours blend, but leave enough behind to keep the depth that you've created. Now that dorsal fin, the top fin, comes right down to almost between the eyes so you want to um, make sure that that comes forward enough too otherwise it might look a little bit funny. Now I've got my dark blue again I think. Is it red? No, no it's red, sorry. I'm just going with the same kind of motion again that I did just did with the white. Oh, excuse me again. I do hope I'm not putting you to sleep. <laughs> With those little tiny almost circular motions with the body and the long flowy motions with the fins and you really can't go too wrong just breaking up where I've gone a little bit heavy with the, the highlight Just fixing up his head shape a little bit now. So just fixing up the shape there, I'm going to move the eyes back a little bit. To do that I need to cover them over with the orange again so that I can see where they really should be. I'm 
show that the head just a little bit hopefully that'll get him looking right that's much better just working on getting that dorsal fin good now Taking the leaf out of the the wings and the tail fin, just going with that sort of flowy motion. Almost done now. Putting the eyes back in. Sorry for my head in the way. I've got the wrong bud standing back, so that you, <laughs> so it wasn't. So I'm almost blind, so I need to see. Oh, just a little bit bigger. Looking much better. And a little highlight on there. And on the other one. And there we go. Slightly, slightly bigger. Much happier with his head now. So me being me, I muck around with it a bit a little bit too long. End up having to redo bits that I've covered and undo bits that I have uncovered I guess you could say <laughs> but he's really standing out nicely from the page now and really popping he's going to get some more of that dark blue so lost a fair bit of it with the the rubbing and the and the other colors layering on I do love that rich stalo blue And I do love aqua. Just building on that water now. If you have any questions about any part of this, please ask. Um, I don't really like to ramble on when I don't have a lot to say but um, I do understand that sometimes um, maybe I don't say enough about what I'm up to and uh, it's something I'm working on when I teach classes live that they say you have to explain a bit more <laughs> slow down so I'm trying to keep these um, nice and slow so that they're easy to follow. But, um, but yeah, hopefully my explanations of what I'm doing at various times are enough for you to understand. If not, though, please let me know and I will try to, um, to improve. So again, just, just a very, very, very light touch. blending that water otherwise you're going to lose everything that you've done so far bring a little bit of green back into that again so pretty it's touching through the water down on this left hand side where it's still a little bit rough And just working my way around with the very gentle touches to smooth out and, and blend that water so that it it's um, consistent.
fiddle, fiddle, fiddle thumb. That would be me. <laughs> Are you a fiddler? Perfectionist? Play with it too much? I know I'm guilty quite often. I do try not to though. Sometimes. Again, remember to keep your hands well wiped. Especially if you're going between colours and you don't want to get muddy. Bring a little bit more highlight back into the water. Nice sort of randomly zigzaggy motion there. I think that'll do. Are we done? I think we are. I'm pretty happy with that. What do you think? Are you ready to be done with it? Touch more green. Touch more, touch more. I think that'll be just about it. It's the trick, isn't it? Know when to say when. I've always got to just add that a little tiny bit more. So what was going to be a, a very loose painting has turned into maybe not quite so much but um, I'm still rather happy with the finished product as I said earlier I would love to see how yours turned out and I would love to hear from you with any questions that you might have and any um, complaints that you might have too if you want me to improve in some area um, I would love to hear from you so don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. And I will very, very much look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. You have a wonderful day, night or whatever it is for you. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.